Okay, welcome back to Galley of the Sun. So we've gotten a lot of hits on our creamy video and the strawberry whiskey ice cream video where I made a couple other ice creams in there. And we've been asked to make a couple of things. Um, one of the things was the chocolate gelato. So I'm using the recipe out of the book, except I'm doubling it because one of the things that I wasn't gonna do was try it on, online for you first without trying it in my home first and seeing how we liked it. And let me just tell you, their recipe for the tripl triple chocolate gelato is phenomenal. Um, so that all has to take place over at the stove. Couple of things you wanna think about when you start off with this is the single, the single pint recipe, and we're gonna double it because that's how much we liked it. The single pint recipe calls for four egg yolks. So you have eight egg yolks. Hopefully you have a use for all those egg whites, otherwise you have to toss them. Go ahead and prep all that stuff first, just like you see back here that I've got it all prepped. Um, simply because it's just a whole lot easier because you actually have to monitor everything when you're doing this because you there's temperatures you have to adhere to. You also need to have an ice bath ready so that you can cool down the ice cream mixture before you put it in the freezer so it freezes more consistently. Um, or you may not get that wonderful creamy gelato texture that you're looking for. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm going to do today. The other thing that we found is we found this Ghirardelli sweet ground powder white chocolate flavored powder. This is what you would make like white chocolate cocoa with or put into your coffee for a white chocolate mocha. Did some playing around with it and I'm going to actually make white chocolate peppermint bark ice cream, hence the peppermint in here and some really good chocolate for the peppermint bark. Now the rest of it, I'm just gonna be making some vanilla bean. I'm gonna be making about three vanilla beans. You've seen me do that before. And then you're also gonna see me make one of my absolute favorite, which is Java chip. It's this Mexican espresso instant coffee that I use when I make my Java chip, and it's just amazing. So we make the Java base, and then I'll put the chips in later. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and do the peppermint chip because that's a really favorite one in our house too. So let's get going over at the stove with the, the gelato. So we're over here at the stove. I have eight egg yolks. We're gonna pour those in here. And yes, because we're doubling it, it does take eight. Okay, and this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with these eight egg yolks, and then it takes brown sugar. Most of the other recipes take regular sugar or agave or something like that. This takes brown sugar. Now, the original recipe is for one third cup, so I just doubled that, and I've got two thirds cup right there. It also calls for two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Well, four tablespoons of cocoa powder is one quarter cup. And it asks to use dark cocoa powder, but since that's all I use in my house is the dark cocoa powder, we're good. And then we're gonna turn the heat on and we're gonna get that sugar melted. Um, it calls for two tablespoons for a single pint of chocolate fudge topping mix. This is a quarter cup and we're gonna put all of this in here. Now this is the Chucker Cherries cherry chocolate fudge topping mix, which if you've ever had it, it's really good. So this may have just a slightest cherry flavor, but that's okay, because we happen to like that flavor. If you don't like that, use a straight chocolate fudge flavor. Um, the original recipe that I did when I tried this out, we actually used the Tarani dark chocolate syrup that you use for mochas and stuff like that. We're gonna get this and we're gonna just kind of cook this down. And because this has egg yolks in it, that is part of why it has to be cooked. Now the other ingredients in it is, it's three quarters cup of heavy whipping cream and three quarters cup of whole milk. I have actually just done that right here and doubled it, so I have three cups total. And once this melts down some, so it's not so gritty, we will add that in. And then from there, you see that I have the thermometer out. We're gonna cook it, stirring, this is, this is a little time consuming, just letting you know, but it's, you have to stir it constantly with um, a whisk or a spatula or something. Uh, 
until it reaches between 165 and 175. And then we'll pull it off and we'll add in the dark chocolate chunks, two tablespoons, well, two tablespoons again is a quarter cup. So I have a quarter cup of dark chocolate chunks and that'll get mixed in and until they're melted. And then we're gonna take all of this wonderful chocolate mixture here with the cream and everything when we get to it and we're gonna run it through a fine mesh strainer to get out kind of any of the chunky stuff. And then we get to put it into our pints and put it in an ice bath and get that cooling. And then while that's cooling, we're gonna go back over to the island and we will start doing the other ones. And I'll show you the white chocolate and the java and I'm just gonna do the vanilla off camera because you've already seen that. So if you can see in this camera over here that I have pointing down into the pot, when we first got this in here, it was kind of gritty looking. It is still kind of gritty looking, so we're just gonna keep kind of cooking this down a little bit, constantly stirring it while the sugar dissolves. And you see I'm scraping the sides down. Now, if you've got like a candy thermometer or an oil thermometer that you can hook to the side of your pot, that's great. I don't, I use these. So we're gonna go ahead and pour in the milk and cream mixture. And I've got this over about a medium heat. Um, you may wanna go medium low. Um, I wouldn't go over a medium heat just because I worry about scalding the milk and the cream. And that is the last thing you want because that'll just make this taste horrible. This is where we start with the stirring all the time. Now this is not gonna be brought to a boil, so just remember that, it's not gonna be brought to a boil. And we just want to whisk this really good, get it blended in there. You can see it looks like a really nice hot chocolate right now. You can start to see some of the little chocolate pieces in this. Those should start melting down. See, I'm only at about 84 degrees right now, so we're just gonna sit here and just kinda stir this, keep it going. Now this can take five, 10 minutes. Plan on being here stirring for a while. Of course, if you do it by the, the one pint, the temperature's gonna come up a little bit faster. I'm doing it by the two, but that's because we really liked this and we're gonna have a lot of it. And part of keeping this stirring all the time is, is to keep it from scalding or from burning anywhere. Now, when you take it off the heat to put in your chocolate chunks, if you've got an electric stove, absolutely remove your pot. If you don't and you've got a gas stove like ours, you can just turn it off. You might wanna move it over to one that, you know, the cast iron grates aren't gonna be hot. And yes, you've heard me talk about our Ninja cookware. This is it. I can use metal stuff in my Ninja cookware and it's gonna be okay. Am I gonna try to cut on it or do that? No, I'm gonna take a little better care of it than that. But I can do this as far as the whisking goes. I'm not like scraping across it or anything. Okay, I'm up to about 120, so we still have about 45 degrees more to go. The other really nice thing about this Ninja cookware is you can go from the stove to the oven. It will it do exactly what you need it to do. Um, of course, you know, if you're gonna take it to the oven, remember, these handles and stuff get hot. You know, and as with any product, read about the safety stuff on it. Read about its capabilities. But I can't tell you enough just how much we love our Ninja cookware. Or, you know, any of our Ninja stuff. So I don't make gelato often just because it is a cooked one and it takes a long time. I like doing the easy way. Microwave the cream cheese 15 seconds, add your other stuff, and you're good to go. I've made chocolate ice cream that way where I've just added the, the two tablespoons of chocolate powder to the vanilla base and you know mix that in when I did the uh, cream cheese and the sugar and the vanilla. And that has turned out really, really good too. But this is just like extra decadent. And it ought to be for, you know, the time you have to put forth to it. Okay, we are there. So let's turn this off the heat. I am gonna move this over just a little bit. So now I'm gonna add the chocolate chunks. And we just stir those in until they're melted. It's kind of 
hard to tell if they're melted in all of this liquidy stuff, but you notice the color got a little bit more chocolatey brown. All right, so let me move that to the side for a second. I think that's all done. Now, I absolutely love these Pampered Chef mix and pour batter bowls. I've got the uh, eight cup and the four cup. You see me use the four cup when I make the ice cream bases and it's because you can see in them and everything. This is just a fine mesh strainer and it fits right on top of there. And we're just gonna pour this right through here. Because remember, we want this creamy. We don't want it chunky at all. And you can see that I'm getting some chocolate chunks out of it. You know, we don't want, you know, any of the, the maybe of the cooked egg that may have come through on this in here. I'm just kind of scraping this out so that I can get all of the goodness into here. And then we'll pull that out. Okay. But you can see what I'm talking about right now about why they have you do the fine mesh strainer and that's so that you can, don't have this stuff in your ice cream. We're just gonna fill our up to the fill line. And you see, it's pretty hot. So then we're gonna set these into the ice bath over here and I'll get you a better picture of that momentarily. See if I can get the ice out from underneath of it so it sits flat, there we go. You don't wanna get the water in it, so just be careful when you do that. Fill it to the fill line. I got a little bit extra, but it looks like that one's not quite filled to the fill line, so that's okay. And this just helps cool them down so that they're nice and um, will freeze more evenly. So I've got just a little tiny bit left over here, which means I probably made a little bit more in milk than I needed to, but we'll just work on getting that done. I'll just dump that out. Thinking if you probably wanted to drink it, you could, but I'm not into drinking eggs, so. <laughs> We're gonna let that ice bath and then we're gonna get back over to the island and I'm gonna show you the white chocolate base that we do. So we're back at the island and we're gonna start with the white chocolate. So this is what we're starting with. I'm gonna double this. So we're gonna go with two tablespoons of my whipped cream cheese. We're going to microwave that for about 15 seconds. And you see that I'm using the big bowl because we're doing a double batch. Now, one of the things that you won't see me do is you won't see me add any sugar. And the reason why is this powder is pre-sweetened. So we don't really need to add any sugar. I just need to get that. Now the, the wonderful thing that I have found with keeping the cream cheese mixture in this is that it gives it that little bit of tang that you like with any kind of ice cream. Um, but instead of using one third cup of this powder like you would with the sugar, I'm using actually two thirds cup because we want that nice white chocolate flavor. We're going to mix that in. And then your milk and your cream ratio are all the same. We're going to go ahead and do, because I'm doubling this, it's going to end up being one and a half cups of heavy cream and two cups of milk. So let's go ahead and add the milk first. And I use Fairlife whole milk for the most part. Just because I like it, the extra proteins kind of make you feel like you're getting a little bit healthy on this, maybe. If Fairlife made heavy cream, I would so be on that too. I'm just kind of stirring this to dissolve the white chocolate powder. And I'm not adding any vanilla to this because white chocolate is basically a vanilla flavor. So there's no need to add vanilla. Plus we wanna make sure that we have that white chocolate going on no matter what. We're gonna do one and a half cups of the cream. And it is literally that simple. And then I get my two pints. And the nice thing is, is if you get a big thing like this, cause that's how we found it on Amazon, is 
You can use it to make white chocolate cocoa. Like I said, you can put it in your coffee for a white chocolate mocha. So I've got two pints here that we're gonna go with this. We're just gonna fill them to the fill lines. And if you can see behind me, we still have the gelato chilling in that ice bath. Well, that came up a little bit short, so let's just even that out a little bit. There we go. <laughs> so they're still sitting there in that, that bath, and I will go get, when they get down to about mm, 75, 80, that's when I'll think about putting them in there because that's about room temperature. Next up, we're gonna do the java. So again, we're gonna do a tablespoon to two tablespoons of the cream cheese. We're gonna pop that in the microwave. And this part is done really simply too. Now this is where I'm gonna use the one third cup of sugar and blend that in. Now even with the java, I do use vanilla. Okay, and I use, I like a little more vanilla taste in mine. It, I think it just smooths everything out a little bit. So I'm using, instead of one teaspoon, I'm using two. Two tablespoons of the java powder, but that's because I like coffee taste. I absolutely love coffee ice cream. And this espresso instant coffee is so good. It's gonna get that blended in there. And you can already smell it because of that instant coffee. You can already smell that coffee smell. It's funny, I smell that coffee smell and my mouth just waters. It's like, oh, I need a cup of coffee now. <laughs> All right. Let's do our one cup of milk in this. And you can see it starts looking like a latte, but we need to make sure we get all of that blended in really well. Which is why I love using these Pampered Chef mix and pour batter bowls, just because they, you can see everything. They're, they're these wonderful glass. They've got a handle, they've got a pouring spout. You can see everything. All right, I think that's got pretty good on it, there we go. And then we add in our three quarters cup of heavy cream. All right, and into our pint it goes. I'll have Mike put a label on the top of this one for Java chip. And you can see that it didn't quite dissolve all of the granules, and for me, that's just fine because that's like having like little coffee nibs in it. All right, there we go. Okay, I will see you back when we blend these up and I'll show you what we do with all the mix-ins. Thanks so much, I'll see you tomorrow. Hi, welcome back to Galley of the Sun. It's day two of this ice cream and it's also after Thanksgiving, so I can wear Christmassy stuff, and we're going into some Christmassy flavors here. We've got the white chocolate peppermint bark going. I bought these candy canes at, I think it was Sam's Club, and I like them because the packaging is nice and easy to get off, and they break up into nice pieces like this, so you can see. And then we use a really good chocolate. I happen to like this. I happen to like dark chocolate, and I've just broken it up into nice big pieces, kind of like you would get in peppermint bark. And then we've got the chocolate gelato that we're gonna spin, and I've got my java chip, and then I've got my, my peppermint chip. So let's just get started here with the white chocolate. You can see it turned out really nice. When I did the white chocolate, I was like, oh, that's a little low, it's not going to the top. Well, I realized why as soon as I stopped filming. And thank God it wasn't frozen yet. I called for two thirds cup of the white cocoa powder. Well, that's for one pint. So I added the other two thirds cup, mixed it all up together, poured it back into the pints, went up to the line, we were golden. So now I have the proper amount of white chocolate in there. So we put our creamy together. Power it on, hit ice cream. Now, because this has a lot of big mix-ins, because I use about two candy canes per pint, and I'm gonna use quite a bit of this chocolate. I'm gonna save a little bit for the Java chip. I got a bigger container out to kind of mix it and keep it in. So 
So because I don't want the peppermint pieces chopped up any smaller, because you know, peppermint bark has the bigger pieces of peppermint. I'm gonna wait to mix those in until I mix in some of this chocolate. But we're gonna grab a little spoon and we're gonna try this little bit right here that's just the white chocolate part. Because when we made it the last time, it was so good. And break it down. We're going to bring it out. We're going to open it up. And you see it's really kind of very soft serve right now. This is going to harden up. Um, I think instead of mixing the chocolate in here, I think I'm just going to mix it in the bowl. Because you can see it's just pouring. And a lot of that's just because of the white chocolate powder. But this sets up really nice. So It'll set up like regular ice cream, really, really nice for you. Trust me, I've already done the testing on it just to make sure it would do that. So let's get the other thing of white chocolate out and get that spinning so we can get it all mixed up. So you don't have to use the mix-in function. Just remember that when you do, it will tend to chop up whatever you put in there into much smaller pieces. So. I'm going to go ahead and add in all the peppermint because we're going to add this in in a little bit. And I'm going to add in a, a lot of these good dark chocolate chunks. Once we get the rest of the ice cream in here and I take this back to the freezer to sit, it will be perfectly creamy. It'll be a much better hard pack and it's, it'll just be amazing. You'll love it. We love it. You'll love it. Again. It comes out pretty creamy and that's okay because this will harden back up but it'll harden back up and still be really nice and creamy and smooth and yummy yum, yum, this yum, is what yum. it should look like mike you want to come have a taste yum, 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 okay yum. because we're going to a dark chocolate i'm not going to worry about cleaning the blade right now we are going to go to the gelato. So I put the dark, the triple chocolate gelato in there. And we put it in here. So we do go to the gelato setting and let it do its thing. And if you're anything like me and you make a lot of different things at different times, get some little post-it notes, put it on the top of what you got. Um, if, the dry erase markers may work well. I don't know how well they stay in the freezer, but these work out great. Now we've made this before and Mike sat down and almost ate an entire pint in one sitting. That's how good it is. It is time consuming, so just remember that. You may wanna make two of them at the same time so that you've got plenty. All right. Oh, and look at that. Look at that. Yum, yum, that is so yum, amazing. Yum, 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 yum. yum. <laughs> mm. Worth the time. It is so yummy and smooth and creamy and gets you everything that you think of in gelato this is it yeah and it's done at home in the creamy and just remember if your ice cream does come out kind of a little you know, runny like that white chocolate one go ahead and blend it get it creamed together and then just refreeze it oh. so this is really one of my favorites this is the java chip you see how it looks like a nice latte okay you might like your lattes a little bit lighter than this, no, but no, 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 no. to me, that's a great color for a latte. So we put it in here. This gets blended on just ice cream. And then I've saved the mini chocolate chips for the peppermint ice cream. All right, look at that. See, it looks like a whole lot more like a latte color that you would think of when you get it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put the rest of these chocolate pieces in and I'm just gonna kind of mush them down in the, into the center and do the mix-in function on it. 
Mmm, and there is my mocha chip. Mm. Do you want to try it, Mike? Mmm. Now, I can sit down and eat this whole thing. I make a really deep coffee flavor in it because that's what I like. I like that nice deep coffee flavor. Now you've watched me make peppermint before. Again, like with the peppermint, you can make it as strong a peppermint or as light a peppermint as you want. I do strongly suggest that if you, you know, when you're using a peppermint extract to also use some vanilla because it just smooths out the flavor so much. All right. And there we go. Again, this is kind of smooth, so I don't think I need to actually run it through the mix-in. I think I can just stir these in and we will be good to go. I use, it usually calls for about a quarter cup. I probably use more than that just because I like extra chocolate in it because, you know, chocolate. And we're just gonna mix that up in there and then I'm gonna go refreeze this. And you could serve it like this if you wanted to. It's, it would be like, you know, the soft serve that you get when you make ice cream at Girl Scout camp and, and they did it in the churn. And Mike, you wanna try this batch of mint chip? <laughs> mm. Mm. All right, so that's ice cream for now. You've seen the creamy video where I just showed you the machine. You've seen our one where I did the strawberry whiskey ice cream with that special, special jam. I suggest you all go to Ryan Family Farms. Yeah, I think they're on Etsy, but definitely look them up. Ah, yeah, there's a link in the description for that video. Look them up, buy their stuff. It's amazing. <clears throat> Until next time, see you at Galia Sun.